Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a look at a difficult question involving similar triangles. Now, this is quite a unique question, and the normal style of questions are a little bit different to this one, but I will link that video in the description for the full lesson on this topic. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at this one, uh, feel free to do so, but otherwise, I'm just going to show you how you can go about finding those extra questions and the extra lessons. Okay, so when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description and you scroll down in the description, you'll see right at the top there, you've got a video with the five hardest topics on paper three. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can download my checklists and practice booklets for this exam. Just below that, you'll have the whole series, obviously at the moment, this is the first one coming out, so it's not quite filled in yet, but you'll have the whole series of questions that I'm going to be uploading in the lead up to the exam. Just below that, you have the series of exam revision videos. Obviously, we're focusing on paper three now, so we're going to be looking at those paper three videos for foundation or higher. You can also find those in the playlists. So that's how we go about using this video. And right at the bottom, you'll see that for some of them, I'll put some timestamps in, but down the bottom there, you have topics featured in this video. So I'll link all the appropriate videos for this topic or for whichever topic we're looking at right inside the video. So hopefully that's useful and helpful. We've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. Okay, so looking at this question. It says the two triangles in a diagram are similar. There are two possible values of x, work out each of these values and state any assumptions you make in your working. Now what makes this question very unique is the fact that it says there are two possible values of x. And let's think about why that might be. Now you can see that the triangles are here drawn in the diagram. Now usually this line here, we would normally be told that it is parallel to this line here. And that would only give us one possible value of x in this question. Because if they were parallel, this angle here and this angle here would be equal. And as well as that, this angle here and this angle here would be equal. And that would only give us one possible solution. Now by saying that there are two possible solutions and not telling us that those lines are parallel, well actually these triangles could be similar well, they are similar, but they could be, so like this triangle here, the little one, could be rotated so that it's sat just there, pointing up in a different direction. And then maybe this angle is the same as this angle, and maybe this angle in the bottom right is the same as this angle in the bottom right. And if that's the case, we can have two different answers. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at if this is in the correct orientation at the moment, what would be that value of x? And if it was in the other orientation, what would then be the value of x? So as you can see, this is a very unique question, certainly not an easy one. So to start off with, let's find the current uh, value of x as it's drawn if they are already in the correct orientation. And what you can do is draw these separately, if you prefer. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume that we are obviously approaching a difficult question here. We're already quite good at similar shapes. So I'm going to take the larger length divided by the smaller length. And the larger length here is the total of 12 and 3. So that would be 15 for the larger length divided by the smaller length or the corresponding length there, which is 12. So that's 15 divided by 12, and that's our scale factor. So if that's our scale factor, to get from 8 up to the full length of the line here, we're going to multiply by the scale factor. So we're going to multiply that by 8. And when we do that, obviously we're doing this on a calculator. So 15 over 12 multiplied by 8 gives us a total length of 10. So if the total length of the triangle is 10 and the smaller triangle has a length of 8, then the value of x must be 2 centimetres. So to write that down, we would do 10, take away 8, and that gives us two centimetres, and that is one of our possible solutions. So there we go, we'll highlight that, because now we're going to think about if it was the other way. Now if it was the other way, it's not quite as simple as it seems, because if we do rotate this triangle, there are a few things that don't change. Let's imagine it goes there. 
Now obviously this length now would be 12 and this length down here would be eight. So the difficult part here is when you have to find, find the new scale factor because we need to remember that the base of this triangle, the full length, is not gonna change. So it's still gonna be 15. So we're now gonna do 15 and we're gonna divide it by the new length down the bottom, which is now eight. And that'll give us our scale factor if this is the correct orientation. So that's our new scale factor. And now we're gonna to have to multiply it by 12 to get the full length of the triangle. So if we multiply it by 12, 15 over eight, multiplied by 12, and let's type that in on the calculator. There we go, let's delete that, times that by 12, and it gives us the answer, 22.5. So there we go, now the full length of the triangle, just there, is 22.5, and let's just label that. 22.5. Now, the first thing that we would probably think to do here is to subtract the 12 to find the gap in between the triangles. But if we did that and we take away 12 from 22.5, it would only actually give us this distance here. And that is not the distance of x. The distance of x is the full length from the c down to the b. And that means we need to actually subtract the eight just here. So actually, I'm going to have to do 22.5 and take away the 8. And that leaves me with a length of 14.5. And that is my other value. So that's quite a difficult step there, because obviously normally when we're doing this, we just take away the, well, the length of the smaller triangle. We would normally just have taken away the 12. But because we're actually finding the value of the x in the original diagram, that is actually making this a little bit trickier than it you know than it normally is because we have to take away the eight instead so that's quite a difficult thing to comprehend i'd imagine that unless you're very very good with shapes in this particular topic that you might have to rewatch that again but that is our two or there are our two answers for this particular question now this question also threw in that line at the bottom it said state any assumptions that you make in your working now these assumptions are just the assumptions that we normally use for similarity. So when we are looking at similar shapes, we assume that all of the angles are the same. So we will assume in this question that all of the angles within the triangles are the same. We also assume that if triangles are similar, that the corresponding sides are in the same ratio. So for example, in our original diagram, let's just get rid of this here. In this particular example, we assumed that Let's just highlight it, the 12 and the three is in the same ratio as the eight and this X or the full length. So the 12 and the 15 is in the same ratio as the eight and the, I guess we'd have to call it X plus eight, the total length, okay? So they are our two assumptions. So I'll say those again. You have, we assume that all of the angles are the same size and we also assume that all the corresponding sides are in the same ratio. So there's our two assumptions, and we'd write those along with the question. So there we go, as I said, that's quite a tricky question, but I will link the video in the description for more different question styles. Uh, not quite like this one, because this is very unique, but I'll link that in the description. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.